When you start modifying a vehicle beyond the parameters for which it was originally designed, a series of challenges will undoubtedly emerge. Today, we are facing some of those challenges. I want to start off by focusing on making these massive 38-inch tires fit on the Land Cruiser, and also restore the balance between the lifted suspension and the drivability of the rig. We're starting off by installing some Spider-Tracks wheel spacers to give the tires more clearance and alleviate issues where we were rubbing the frame and contacting the radius arms while turning the steering wheel. However, we're still dealing with the tires hitting the inside of the front fender well, which is nothing a big hammer won't fix. We also need to figure out how to restore the handling and the drivability of this rig after installing the suspension lift. Since we lifted the rig 3.5 inches, we basically threw a wrench right into the gears of the suspension geometry, and the driving characteristics could only be described as completely unpredictable and borderline dangerous. Today, we're fixing that. All right, with the spacers installed, now the tires fit on the Land Cruiser. So these are a 13 and a half inch wide tire. I think if they were a 12 and a half inch wide, they would have fit without any spacers because these are a zero offset wheel. But with the width of the tires and the offset of the wheel, they were hitting the frame, they were hitting the radius arm, as you guys saw in those last videos. So we put on a one and a half inch spider track spacer, which I think got us to about negative 38 offset and now the tires fit perfectly on the truck and they look a lot better too But we're still dealing with other issues from the suspension lift We have to fix the pan hard angle and we have to fix the caster and Both of those are going to be fixed by adding these suspension brackets here. So we have these two brackets here for the pan hard bar and They're going to drop it down and get it level. So right now that pan hard bar if I'll just use my arms. If this were the axle and this were the pan hard bar, they're supposed to be like this. So when the suspension compresses, you're doing this. Right now, this pan hard bar is like this. And every time the suspension compresses, it shoots the axle out to the right. And you could actually see it in the tires on the truck. Like one side is sticking out, the other side is pushed in, and everything is off. So once we get these welded in, we're gonna be able to level out that pan hard bar. And then the radius arm bracket, these, are going to drop the bracket down and the radius arm can mount lower which will flatten that radius arm it'll give us some positive caster and it will push the axle forward one inch we are headed to the hardware store right now to pick up some spacers for this bracket right here and what we're thinking is I want to put a spacer in between this while I'm welding it so that it doesn't flex or move at all under the heat so Maybe a piece of all thread with two nuts in the middle just to block that thing from bending or some tube or just anything that we can use as a spacer. Now, I also wanted to say, as I mentioned previously, how like this thing feels really unstable to drive. Um, I found a really good way to explain it. it. It feels like if you're stopping hard or if you hit a bump or basically anything that's not perfect pavement, it feels like you're driving a shopping cart, like how those front wheels are always like shaking around like that. That's what this thing feels like to drive in its current state. I just picked up this titanium welder on sale at Harbor Freight and I mean, I'm a novice welder. Haven't welded since like 2013, so I'm definitely really, really rusty and just getting used to it again. I have a lifeline I can call if I don't feel confident when we're welding on the truck, but we're gonna try to weld this in ourselves. Um, we're running C25 gas, we're running 035 wire, and I literally just got this thing wired today um, to uh, you know, supply 220 to this machine. Also, look at this nostalgic whiteboard right here. This is when we thought it was gonna be easy to fix the Land Cruiser. Little did we know it would not be easy at all. So yeah, we're gonna use this welder. And then, um, actually this is a cool tip as well. If you need a fixture table for welding, I saw this guy named AM Fab, I believe. I'll put his channel right here. Um, and he said, just buy an old Craftsman table saw. It has a one and a half inch thick top here. It's really sturdy, has lots of clamping area here if you wanted to clamp to the table. Um, you know, it has a couple plastic pieces. This burned out and clearly there was a saw blade here, but there's a lot of potential. You can put stops on the edge. You can flip them up to butt your material up to it. These are pretty nice 90 degree corners here where you could mate two pieces up. 
And you know, for like a hundred bucks, you can find these on Facebook all day, turn them into a little cheap welding table. I'm gonna start with the panhard brackets because I think they're gonna be easier. So what I'm gonna do is pop the wheels and tires off, jack it up, and drop that panhard bracket and see what we're working with. This bracket here for the panhard will mount on the driver's side on the axle side mount and this will mount on the frame side mount this is going to raise it up that's going to lower it down so we can get this you can imagine here if our angle is currently like this we could you know install that on the factory mount maybe get it a little bit flatter in the best possible configuration for my rig The reason I went with panhard brackets instead of an adjustable panhard bar is because with the adjustable bar, you are still at that extreme angle compared to stock. Welding these brackets on will flatten the angle and get us as parallel to the ground as possible. If we do need to add an adjustable bar in the future to fine tune the suspension, we could still do that. So the pan heart is out, my part is prepped, and the pieces on the truck are prepped too. This is the spacer that I came up with. It's just an all thread bolt that has nuts on the inside acting as a spacer, nuts on the outside preventing it from flexing that way or this way. So yep, could have done this with a tube, could have done this with anything else, but this works just as well. So what I'm going to do now is start working on getting the machine set up, run a whole bunch of practice welds, and then burn this thing in. I think the welder's pretty well set up. I ended up at 258 for the wire speed and 19 and a half volts. And I was setting it up over here, just holding the wire down and changing settings. That's why it, you got those boogers there. But got some decent beads here, in my very novice opinion. As I said, I'm an extremely novice welder. I have a couple months experience max, and I haven't welded in like eight years. So um, got some here that I was testing, because I was kind of setting it up in an angle where I'd have to weld. So I have to weld sitting like this in the truck um, for that butt joint where that uh, bracket welds on. So I was doing those welds there, some practice. I did some verticals too. So all the welds here, it's a vertical weld. Everything that's pulled on this little uh, lap joint right here is a vertical weld. I think that's the term lap joint when one thing's over the other. Correct me if I'm wrong, sorry. As I said, not a welder, but 
I think it'll hold, I think it'll work. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack that bracket onto the truck and see what kind of damage we can do. Well, it's in and I don't think I did that terribly. I'm really happy with these ones actually. I think those look pretty good. Um, there's a couple of them that are bad and of course I'll show those to you, but let me show you the good ones first, okay? So this one here, I'm happy with this. This is an important weld. This was the main one that goes across the front of that bracket. I think that one looks okay. This one was a vertical, I think it looks okay. Now here, being a very novice welder, I don't know how to stop it from starting to drip down. I think I'm going too slow. I think I need to go faster or, or maybe spend more time on the vertical material and not the bottom material here. So you can see it kind of boogered up and dripped down there. But we still have good penetration and it's still connected both of the metals. And then this right here, this is a decent one in my opinion. Now the bad one, is on the back side of the mount. I need a flashlight to show you. Um, I don't, I really couldn't get back here that well, so it's really not pretty, but it's still not that terrible. It's just fat. So I really would have liked to have been able to just see that and get my arm back there, but I couldn't. So I welded a bead on the inside of the mount too, and then kind of grinded it down so I could still get the pan hard bar in there. So. I think we're good. I really don't think this thing is ever gonna come off. But one thing I didn't think of, which is hilarious, is the spacer, um, I can't get it out, because now the spring's in the way. So I'm gonna try to cycle the suspension, maybe get some gap in between the spring and get this bolt out. If not, I'll just cut it out and buy a new bolt. And then I'm gonna work on that side bracket. with that one baby look at that all right the frame side bracket is in and man I'm not mad about these welds at all I don't know if it's easier to weld when it's a thinner material like this this is eighth inch or if I just started getting the hang of it after doing the axle side but you can see here on this horizontal pass on a vertical surface I should have sped up right here, I think. I think I should have went a little bit faster because you could see it started to fall a little bit just like I did on the other side, but overall, looks a hell of a lot better in my opinion. I think I did a much better job over here. And um, I always put this flashlight down when I need it, but I think I did pretty good. Um, don't think this is going to break off or crack off or anything ever. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, paint that thing up um, put the pan hard bar back on and see how this thing, see how this thing, uh, sits afterwards. Welding is, uh, very, very fun. I could see myself getting pretty addicted to this. The old saying is that a grinder paint will make you the welder that you ain't. And I think they're onto something because this looks a lot better with paint on it. And that booger weld on the left right there, really don't like that weld, but it looks a lot better, uh, when it's painted black. So these top welds in the corner, still my most 
proud ones of that piece. And on the other side, where the welds were way better in my opinion, looks absolutely fantastic all painted up. So now we just gotta put the pan hard bar back in and see how we sit after we get that thing reinstalled. Just finished installing the pan hard bar and I have two tips to make your guys life easier if you do the same thing. So it's not mentioned in the, on the website at least from what I saw for these mounts, but you're going to have to do something with this ABS wire right here. It's like a metal bracket and I'm assuming a wire runs through it. It goes up this way. I don't know, but it has to be bent and, and persuaded to fit above the nut on the back of that um, bolt right there. So this is going, sorry, I don't have four hands. This line right here is going to have to be bent and moved. The second thing is the kit comes with these two washers and I did not know what they were for until I already had this bolt through the upper frame mount. So those two washers, they fill up the void inside of this mount because this mount that we welded on is an eighth of an inch wider on each side than the factory mount so you have to make up that difference and that's what those two washers are for so those are just two quick tips to make your life easier if you're installing these same i'm keith mounts other than that i mean that's not even a downside in my opinion but that's really all that there is to it those are the only two caveats the only two gotchas so here's the pan hard angle after the install as you can see it's still got a little bit of an angle but it's much less than it was before that gauge was 10, I believe, before we installed these mounts. And it's only three now, so we've corrected seven degrees. Now, I don't think you measure pan hard angle in degrees, but that just gives us a point of reference. It's a way to, you know, see that in real time, that it did change something. And I mean, obviously we can see it with our eyes too. It's a lot flatter than it was. And we're using the first mount on the axle side mount and the bottom side mount on the frame side mount. And the reason I'm doing that is because on I'm Keith's website, it says for a four inch lift, you're going to set it up this way. Now I assume that's a bunch of people that have chimed in about what worked best for them. And I just decided to take their advice and go with the exact same thing. And of course, now the wheels are gonna be a lot more centered from side to side compared to before. We can see, yeah, they're a lot closer. I should have taken a measurement because I don't, have any data to work off of but we can see with our eyes this side is definitely kicked out a little bit more and this side is definitely pushed in a little bit more which actually centered it because this side was like two inches out before and the other side was like one inch pushed in so man that was a lot of work as you guys can see it's dark outside now i've been out here since one it's nine um you know that's just because i'm a novice with this fabrication stuff and I'm just taking my time and learning and just dialing everything in and you know I probably would have got done a lot quicker if I was more experienced but definitely gonna take a break start back up tomorrow and start working on those radius arms it is now day two of this project and the goal is to remove these radius arms hopefully without running into any major issues get the new brackets welded in and then toss everything back together one thing that i found while i was doing this job that i was kind of already expecting is that the bushings in the radius arm and the bushings in the panhar bar both need to be replaced this means that also probably all other rubber bushings in every other suspension component that i haven't already replaced are also bad this is something that not many people think about when they see a high mileage vehicle they often consider the engine health but they completely disregard that the entire vehicle is worn out but over time we'll fix all of that yes
Well, I got the radius arms off, I got the mounts all cleaned up, and I got the frame all cleaned up, so everything is totally free and ready to weld. And I was holding the mount up there, about to tack it, and I don't think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna use my lifeline, I'm gonna call my neighbor Casey and have him come do it, because um, the whole thing is overhead, and I know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to build up a huge puddle, it's gonna start sagging, and I know what my limits are. I'm a very, very, very novice welder, and I don't want to take a chance on something as important as a radius arm mount. Let me take you under there and show you what I'm talking about. So this is about the position I'd have to be in to weld this bracket on. It's this half sit up contorted position that anyone that welds on cars is all too familiar with. And you can see we have two main passes here, this side and this side, and both of them are overhead welds. And you'd have to go the whole length of the bracket right here like that. And then we would have this weld right here as well. And I don't know, I just don't feel comfortable pulling this one. All right, so we have our Savior Casey over here. What we're gonna do, this mounts for the other side. They have these little bends in them that kind of dictate the side they go for. We have it tacked up there. We're gonna heat it up with the propane torch so we get better penetration. And then we should be able to, or he should be able to burn them in. It's not necessary, but why not? We'll start doing this one out here because it's easier to get to. This dude, then we'll come back, do that pass, and then come back on this side and then just walk around it, distribute the heat through the part. Now, are we only doing the outside beads? We're not touching the inside of those mounts, right? If we can get to it and it's an easy weld, I'll do it. Okay. If it's difficult and total, the finished product's gonna be turdy, then no, we're not gonna do that. Because yeah. the outside will be fine. <laughs> True. <laughs> on whether you pull or, or go uphill or downhill. Mm -hmm. Not I've pull seen or push, it. but uphill or downhill. And you're not supposed to go downhill, technically. Because it's not as hot, it doesn't penetrate as far. But you know what? It's mm -hmm. really hard to make a, a weld look good when you're going uphill. Because you're fighting against gravity yeah. when you're going uphill. Yeah, and you're making just lumps of boogers, man. It's terrible. Yeah. So I, I never do it because, you know, I. It's going to be strong. There's no freaking way that's going to break. I'd rather it look better. Right. All right, the passenger side is burned in. And you can see Casey did an excellent job here. That bead up there looks phenomenal. All the welds are really flat, really hot, and we definitely turned the factory bracket basically into liquid and molten, molten right into the new mount. So everything looks really good. Uh, I'm really happy I asked Casey for the help because I feel super confident in this and I don't think I would have if I did it myself. Uh, he stepped away, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna paint this and then drop the radius arm bracket on the other side and then we'll weld that in once he gets back.
All right, so we are back on the road. The Land Cruiser is all back together, and clearly these mounts have not broken off yet, so I think that we can call that a success. I'm really trying not to overhype the difference that these things are making, but man, when I tell you this feels like a completely new vehicle, it, it feels like a completely new vehicle. This thing literally felt, like I said before, it felt like a shopping cart, like the front wheels were just doing this. And it's a combination of two things. It's a, uh, I was just waving at some neighbors over there. It's the pan hard correction and the radius arm correction. I don't know which one's making a bigger difference. I would assume it's probably the radius arm. But this thing feels so much more stable when you're driving it. When you're braking especially is when I really noticed it wanted to steer me off the road. And hitting any small bump was, um, it was kind of terrifying. It would kind of shift the whole truck over and it kind of wanted to steer me almost from the rear. It was really, really weird. And now I have that confidence when I'm driving and it completely transformed everything. Now, I do think we still need additional caster correction. I don't even think I'm in positive caster yet. I think I was so negative after the lift that this just got me closer, but I was reading, now I'm not an expert on, on suspension alignment or, or any of that stuff, but I was reading about it just like all of us do to learn. And I was reading that positive caster and big tires go hand in hand. So we might put on the caster plates or I might get aftermarket caster arms or whatnot but as this is right now this is a million times better than it was and honestly I could not be happier with the way that this is performing so in terms of lifting a Land Cruiser I would say that these two things are absolutely essential if you're doing anything over probably like an inch lift you need to fix your your caster and you need to fix your pan hard angle or else it's gonna drive terribly and you're gonna be left wondering why after you spent all the money on the suspension why it actually feels worse than it did before and this is probably the reason why another thing that this is gonna help with is your approach angle and fitting larger tires so fitting the 37 or 38 it's like yeah the Land Cruiser has really large wheel wells and it makes fitting a tire a lot easier than it would on other vehicles but it's still a huge tire and it, it gets stuck in that front wheel well that's why we had to hammer it at the very beginning of the video to, to get the tire to even be able to turn but since these brackets push the axle forward about one inch 25 millimeters is about one inch it really gets those tires out of the wheel well and it will allow you to fit a much larger tire without having to modify your fender wells or anything like that so i'm in a roundabout right now just driving in circles or a cul-de-sac rather not a roundabout but i'm driving in circles to see if the tires hit and they don't hit anything and <laughs> I don't know, I'm speechless. This thing drives so, so, so much better after welding these brackets on. It's unbelievable. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today. I thought this was a really fun episode, learning a new skill, learning how to weld and then apply that to the Land Cruiser welding on those brackets, and then getting such a, a measurable difference in the performance of how this thing drives. I thought that was really cool. Um, as always, guys, thank you so, so, so much for watching these videos. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.